right, well, welcome. Um, thank you for joining us on this crazy back to school time. We really appreciate you taking um, time out of your day to, um, to you know, zoom in and, and check this out. We're really excited to have you. Um, if you know of people um, that were not able to attend, uh, we are recording this and we will share it out um, in details of that, where it's going to be shared and those types of things are, are coming along. Um, this is the learning series. This is a partnership between the Department of Public Instruction in Wisconsin and Wisconsin Google for Education team. My name is Chad Clefo. I am the digital learning consultant uh, here at the Department of Public Instruction. And today I'm joined by Ann Nash and Mike Patterson, who are our representatives for the Wisconsin um, Google for Education. We are excited to kick off this learning series. It's going to be um, a series that's going to happen throughout the school year, um, going to be monthly. We will share the amazing things that are happening around um, the, the state. Um, we're going to highlight the Google tools that that educators are using and how they're really focusing on enhancing the pedagogy that, that's going on in their classrooms. And so we'll, we will invite experts from all across the state each month to share the projects and, and tools that they're using in their classroom, how they're using it. Um, and then uh, people will have actually an opportunity to ask questions um, and, and make those connections. So we're really excited to kick this off. I'm really excited to, to team up with um, Ann and Mike, um, we will, like I said, we are recording this. So if you have people that you want to share this with, um, I will give you the link to that um, after this. Um, today's format is going to be a little bit different. Um, we are going to kick it off uh, in a very timely manner. And we're going to highlight the new things that Google has to offer um, this coming school year, as well as enhancements to amazing um, products that, or tools they already have, and the exciting Chromebook App Hub that we've all been waiting for for quite some time, uh, me specifically. So if you have questions throughout the presentation, please don't hesitate. Put them in the Google chat or in the chat for the Zoom. We'll really try to get to those at the end. We'll get through as many as we can. For the ones we can't get through, I will, that will also be archived and we'll be able to dig through those, answer those questions and get those out to you as well. So with that being said, Ann and Mike, I will turn it over to you for your expertise. Awesome. Thank you, Chad. Uh, so just wanted to call out quickly, some of you may have noticed that there is closed captions being captured at the bottom of the screen. Uh, Annie does have the closed ca caption functionality that is uh, one of the options available on the toolbar. Annie, if you move your mouse slightly just to show everyone, this is picking up speech from across three different devices in three different locations using the device's microphone. So you may see a few words that throw you off a little bit, but we wanted to make sure that the text was there also with the content. So let's jump into a pretty quick What's new at Google for EDU, as I'm sure you're all here to hear from my teammate, Annie, on the amazing content in the Chromebook app. Hub. So first thing we always like to share, and we've said this anytime we've been in Wisconsin, is to encourage you to continue to provide us feedback. The question mark opportunity to fill in and provide feedback on any aspect of G Suite, Chromebooks, Chrome OS, is something that we take very seriously at Google for Education. Every single piece of feedback, no matter how crazy you think it might be on a feature suggestion or a way we could do things differently, is reviewed by a team of live humans. It's not just a machine or a repository that your requests go into. We have a team that actively reviews all of your suggestions. And largely what G Suite for Education is today is a result of the feedback that comes from you and educators uh, around the globe. So just wanted to call that out before we jump into all the good stuff happening in G Suite EDU. So first thing, uh, we're really excited about this. This was announced or pre-announced at ISTE. This is actually very timely as we're looking for districts to sign up and be a part of 
the first ever efforts around Google for Education transformation reports. Uh, this is something that's available right now in a, a beta testing, but we've heard your requests uh, as district leaders and as classroom teachers, instructional leads, you wanna know what your students are doing in your learning community, not only with Google, but also how they're developing the four C's and other necessary skills to move themselves forward, not only in their education, but also in their professional careers. So we're excited to announce Google for Education Transformation Reports. And if we go to the next slide, we can break out a little bit of detail as to what this is. And you know, this is something that, as you can see here, quantifies impact of G Suite, the programs, and transformational growth across your district. This is built for G Suite administrators. Uh, meaning the administrators in your district that are hands-on with the usage of G Suite, Chromebooks, certification in your districts, as well as the various transformation programs that are available via Google for Education. The report tracks changes in usage over time and actually will give personalized or tailored recommendations to your leadership teams for where to go to move forward and drive further impact. Uh, these reports are designed to help your leadership team, and I want to make sure that we stress that this is district leadership, but also some of your lead teachers, some people that are hands-on and influential in the classrooms, to look at what is necessary to move your district forward. Uh, a lot of the success of this is, of course, the balance between technology and the people using it, and so we address both of those, which you'll be able to see in the next slide here. So this is a quick snapshot, and I apologize for uh, the size of it here, of really taking a look at the usage, not only on individual tools, uh, but also the graphic at the bottom is a representation of the four C's. And it allows for districts and schools to identify areas of improvement, measuring your progress over a period of time. So once you embark on your first transformation report, that becomes archived and something you can look back on as a point of reference. Uh, we realize that there are more tools within your districts that you use currently, uh, but this is a great start for us in our partnership with your learning communities. And to be honest, it serves as a great way to get insight when sometimes uh, the teaching staff and the administration staff uh, maybe be a little out of touch or need a little bit of help in figuring out what staff um, needs help with as they're looking to improve on those four C's over the course of the year. So in order to jump in, and we'll send this in the follow-up email as well, uh, there is a bit.ly link here, uh, bit.ly edu transformation report. You can sign up for these betas. We're right at the end of summer. We've got a couple weeks left. We're still interested in partnering with more schools. And the reason we want to have this quick of a turnaround is we'd love to set the benchmarks for you and your learning community for the start of the year to see where you grow between now and the end of the school year and obviously moving forward after that. So hopefully uh, this is something of interest to you, something you've been waiting for, and we'd love to get you set up so that you can start getting that type of insight into transformation in your district. So after transformation reports, Classroom over the course of this past year has undergone a significant number of changes, upgrades, again, tying back to that statement I made earlier about getting your feedback and turning it into product features and upgrades. Classroom is probably one of the best examples of that. So Gradebook is now available to everyone. If you haven't been in Classroom yet, when you get in, you'll be greeted by a really user-friendly, interface that allows you to use the grade book uh, in a way that hopefully you've always wanted. Uh, customizing grades, having weighted average, total point based, uh, as well as grade categories for assignments. You can share grades with your students through a host of new classroom settings. And as we head into the next slide here, there's even more good news coming. Uh, we also have introduced rubrics in Google Classroom, and this is a beta. Uh, you'll notice that in the bottom left-hand corner of the text, you'll see a g.co slash classroom slash betas. That is a fantastic place to go to see all of the active betas that are currently happening. Uh, rubrics themselves, this should be a very familiar place for most, if not all of us, that are gathered here today. This is a great way to have a solid 
basis of how you're exploring how students are achieving within content, within the learning goals and outcomes that you have. Uh, teachers can build, view, and grade rubrics all while lining that up to expectations and outcomes for their students. Also in classroom, uh, this is another big ask that's come from school districts, is syncing grades uh, with the SIS system and Google Classroom. So we are working with some of the largest school district, or sorry, largest SIS providers uh, that currently interface with K-12. And we're looking to have a seamless integration in between these two systems. Uh, for most of you that use Classroom and use it to grade, you're very comfortable and familiar with having two screens on which you grade in Classroom and then enter that information into a separate screen or a separate grade book. We're looking to minimize that and have it be an automatic communication between the two. So if you're interested, one, to determine if your SIS is currently working as one of the betas and also to just be there as it's becoming available more and more across those programs, encourage you to go there and sign up. So if you wanna test these new features, again, gave you the, the quick link before, there's also a QR code here, uh, which you can scan right now if you'd like to try, or when we send the follow-up, we'll have the links there as well. All right, as we move further through G Suite, uh, everyone hopefully is rejoicing at the fact that lock mode is officially available and ready for everyone to use and back to school. Just a few reminders, this is for managed Chromebooks. For those of you that are seeing this for the first time, this is a way to very simply and easily lock students into an assessment experience within Google Forms. Uh, you have the ability to lock students in, removing access temporarily from all of their other content and having very thoughtful reminders on both the front and back end of the experience so that students are locked in and hopefully achieving at the highest level. We also introduced accessibility extensions, including Text Help and Don Johnston, uh, which have really helped meet the needs of a much more diverse group of learners. Question import is also live in Google Forms. Uh, for those of you that have stacks of digital forms in your Google Drive and find yourself constantly duplicating old forms to make new ones. Hopefully you're excited about this in the way that now you can import uh, pick and choose or import all questions from a variety of different forms into one single form. Uh, removing the duplications and having to label things by year or semester, this makes things so much easier as you look to customize content for all audiences from one year to the next. Also wanted to share the introduction of grammar suggestions in Google Docs. Uh, this is just one more way within Docs to provide helpful suggestions that not only helps eliminate mistakes, but also continues to reinforce proper grammar techniques with our students. And that is fueled and powered by uh, AI in order to help our students and as well as adults uh, to improve their writing and correspondence. Uh, in Docs. A couple other announcements. Uh, on the left-hand side here, you can see we've launched a Collaborate on Microsoft Office, so you can now edit Office files from Docs, Slides, and Sheets without having to convert the file types. And this is a tap into G Suite features such as Explore, so really nice way to have integration between the two that allows you to utilize uh, both tools and interfaces. Google Docs has introduced a comparison in Docs, so you'll be able to soon compare two different Google Docs, reviewing the differences between the two as well as receiving suggested edits. Uh, Google Sheets, for those of you that have been clamoring for more rows, uh, because of a collaboration with BigQuery, uh, the row count is pushing upwards of 10 billion rows without needing SQL. Perfect for viewing data uh, such as grades, and also analyzing progress, uh, lots of other things happening. Also coming soon are themes in Sheets, which will allow you to quickly style a, what has been a very straightforward columns and rows into a much more aesthetically pleasing experience with Sheets. Last but not least, Google Slides, uh, audio files from Drive into Google Slides is something that we've all been 
anxiously awaiting and should be rolling out to districts very soon. All right, wanted to spend just quickly some time on accessibility and differentiation. And as we've shared at some conferences uh, across the Midwest here, this for us is not about pointing out or announcing new tools, but this is instead raising awareness around all the great tools and uh, pieces of content that we have available as we serve K-12 le learning communities around the globe. So first thing to point out is that our accessibility and differentiation features aim to support the diverse needs of all students and would even take it a step further and say of all learners. Uh, this includes our staff. We have versatile and customizable accessibility settings that are built into our Chromebooks. So every device has built in settings. And then also we have accessibility features and functionality built into G Suite as well as Chrome OS. Uh, you can find information on this uh, available on the Google for Education page. But I would say that this is incredibly important for us to share, not only for what's happening in our schools, but also the fact that this is a personalized experience for everyone that sets these settings up, wherever they travel, the devices they use, these settings do travel with them and become a part of their user experience on any device or any interface. So uh, specific things to call out here, we celebrated Global Accessibility Awareness Day, uh, released some really great news, which we don't have time to go through today, but I encourage you to follow up and, and take a look at what we did. I mentioned locked mode and the accessibility functionality that was added to that. Uh, we've also you, er, introduced Cricksoft Clicker Communicators, uh, which was one of the first AAC apps for Chromebooks. Alternate input, uh, some different options to use, uh, in particular with alternate input, as far as using the dictation into any field, keyboard and mouse settings, as well as G Suite voice typing. Uh, encourage you to explore each of these options within your Chromebook, uh, as well as within G Suite and Chrome OS. The short link you see in the top right-hand corner is also a way to get to a little bit more information around these different tools that I'm quickly breezing over now. Uh, visual impairment support, so some tools out there as well, Select to Speak, as well as Chromevox Screen Reader, and even Braille support, which was one of our more recent introductions uh, into accessibility and differentiation tools. You can also see here in visual support, increased visibility, zoom and magnify, high contrast themes. Again, you know, this is something that's meant to tailor the experience to the end user, whether it's a teacher, a student. Uh, we want to make sure that the accessibility of the device and the content that you are putting in front of a learner is presented in a way that's the easiest to digest, use, and grow from. Audio and captions, so did call out the fact that we are using the closed caption functionality of Google Slides. Uh, we've also introduced mono audio. Uh, one specific thing with Slides captions is that there is no teaching involved with training it on your voice. This is something that's a live capture that's using AI and ML uh, in order to translate at the bottom of the screen. And also this is happening uh, from my device while Chad and Annie are in two separate spaces. Okay, uh, this is just an overview of scratching the surface really, some of the accessibility Chrome extensions that are available. A few of those are probably uh, something that you've seen before such as read and write, but encourage you again, to look and find more information that allows for your experience or your students to be personalized in your learning communities. Okay, just gonna wrap quickly through resources and programs before we hand it over to Annie here. Some announcements that have come out. Uh, first one being in our teacher center, uh, especially as you are ramping up here in that back to school time frame. some newer teachers in your school district, if you're coming from a district that wasn't using Google, we've built out an extensive collection of resources here in particular, the first day trainings, which have uh, trainings on classroom and forms and expeditions, all different ways to gently introduce uh, those topics. There's also an incredible amount of 
uh, resources dedicated to all the programs, Applied Digital Skills, CS First, other ways to use G Suite in education. So please check that out. For those of you that have not been to the Revamp Teacher Center, uh, make that a next bookmark on your list. Next, as we're looking, uh, this has been a long awaited announcement. The G Suite certification for students is now available. This is the first professional certification that we're making available for students that allows them to start building their professional resume. Uh, this shows mastery of G Suite applications in docs, sheets, and slides. And this is something that students, once they pass this certification, will receive a digital badge and it is something that they can add to their resume, LinkedIn profile, or other portfolios that they share as they continue their education careers or even into their professional careers. Applied Digital Skills continues to be uh, built upon and improved. Uh, there are more and more lessons that are being added. The G Suite certification that I just mentioned, there's actually 11 interactive project-based learning themed lessons in there to help prep students and teachers alike uh, to take those exams. We're also launching full-length lessons on cyberbullying and digital safety, uh, part of our online safety and digital awareness curriculum. We also have launched a digital uh, applied skills help center, which has curriculum content, video tutorials, and really allows you to maximize your time and apply digital skills. This is just a quick uh, link out to that, that online safety and digital well-being. I encourage you to check that out. Really good content, uh, a great way if you're still looking for ways to introduce digital citizenship conversation in your classrooms. This is a good start. And this is a, a partnership that we're very proud of with the Family Online Safety Institute and something that we're just gonna continue to grow and build upon. CS First continues to build uh, from its early days as just an after-school club to where now we have introduced CS First as a curriculum uh, that can have lessons and content that can be used and scaffolded throughout K-12. Uh, there are professional development opportunities that are happening all over the country and, and actually, in fact, globally, many of which are scaled through our professional development partners. So if that's something you're interested in bringing to your school, uh, to your CESAs or other areas within Wisconsin, please let us know. There are newer lesson plans that are incorporating ELA, art and math, as well as game design and engineering. So we're really diversifying our content and making sure that it's aligning with the standards that drive decision making in the classroom in Wisconsin. A couple more as we move through here. Be Internet Awesome, which has been around uh, for a short time here has been really growing in launching content, particularly in media literacy. We've introduced six new activities, um, in particular, including one spotting disinformation online or fake news, as many of us have come to know it. We've also been updating the Pear Deck content, the famous teacher resource kit, where basically we've built content in partnership with Pear Deck so that you can plug and play it right into your classrooms with your kids in order to bring this conversation to them. Uh, we continue to develop both English as well as Spanish versions of this and look forward to seeing this evolve. We also have introduced a family guide so that this conversation doesn't end in the classroom but instead can go home uh, with building upon the success of the family pledge that we saw early with BIA this is something that you can now uh, have a guide to those conversations and these resources. Okay, I think the last one for me before we go to Annie here is Expeditions. Uh, great news here is that we've improved our Chrome OS capability, meaning that Expeditions is gonna work seamlessly on Chrome tablets and Chromebooks. Uh, this is gonna be rolling out over the course of the rest of the year. And so we wanna make it so that it, whether it's a Chromebook, a tablet, a VR viewer, all of the thousands of expeditions, tours that are available, including my personal favorite throwback to the Carmen San Diego tours, those are all things that we wanna make accessible to everyone. So the Teacher Center has uh, getting started with AR VR, uh, first day of expeditions. And to learn more about that, you can go to g.co slash expeditions and hopefully get started with that content with your students. All right, I am now, uh, 
happy to introduce my teammate, Annie, who hopefully a lot of you know, to talk to us about the Chromebook App Hub. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. Okay. We're really excited to introduce the Chromebook App Hub. Um, this was something that we announced back in March at South by Southwest and super excited that it is now here. It came out right around IFT. Um, so with that, we'll dive into, you know, why did we build the App Hub to begin with? Who do we build it for? And then I will launch into a demo. So first, um, we talk a, with a lot of teachers, with a lot of IT decision makers, and with a lot of developers. And these questions uh, let us know that there was a problem to be solved. So for instance, where do teachers find resources today? And along the same lines, where do those IT admins and CIOs, where do they find info about the app data and accessibility policies that are being used in their schools? And finally, how can developers show off uh, the best of their offering to all of their um, educators and students? So, as I'm sure most of you, all of you are aware, um, obviously as teachers are beginning to uh, introduce and integrate technology more and more into their classrooms with, of course, the ever limited uh, time constraints that we have, um, they, teachers are spending what, you know, that valuable free time having to look across many different resources in order to find things that will help them do their lesson planning. So uh, teachers are, you know, scouring websites, teacher blogs, um, Pinterest, Twitter, you know, going to other conferences, joining different fellowships and groups. And then um, on the CIO IT administrator side, um, they're doing something very similar, right? They have a lot of different uh, things that they have to check out and keep up on, including legislation. But of course, they're, they're doing similar things, right? They're subscribing to newsletters, trying to go to conferences when they can get the time off, um, you know, looking through different app stores, visiting individual websites of all these different apps. So the problem that we identified was that there is no one single source of truth for finding apps and, or for finding ideas, or for finding policies. So that's where the App Hub comes in. Um, so the App Hub is really just a web, uh, web destination, and it enables educators and developers uh, to work together to showcase how they're using Chromebooks in the classroom. Um, so we have worked with educators so that they, can, they have provided engaging um, Chromebook activity ideas for all K-12 classrooms. Um, to get started, we uh, worked with a lot of different um, educators and IT decision makers. Uh, we reached out to our customer advisory board that we have that is nationwide, and these are just a handful of the people who were a part of our um, original and preliminary focus group. But on the App Hub, what will you find, right? So first, you will find apps. Um, we have over 75 apps. Uh, listen on the App Hub today, and we're onboarding more every single day. Um, some of them include uh, Adobe Spark, Explain Everything, Khan Academy, Book Creator, Class Dojo, Screencastify, Epic. Hopefully, those are just a, you know a handful of ones that you're already familiar with. Um, but super excited that they're they're here on the App Hub, and obviously work really well on Chromebooks as well. Uh, you'll also find ideas. So this is the part that we wanted to really help educators out with, right? So um, not only can they find the app, but then they can find inspiration for how to use that app in an engaging way in their classroom. And we've asked all of our educators to include um, tips and resources as well as um, differentiation uh, strategies with different accommodations. And to actually create the ideas, we worked with um, a PD partner of ours named EdTech Team, as well as uh, our Google Certified Innovators and Google Certified Trainers. Finally, you will find information. Um, so this is the piece where App Hub really helps with that transparency um, component, helping developers um, showcase their data and accessibility policies. These are the things that um, you know, your administrators are really laser focused on regarding uh, student data privacy, um, and, and then also we've worked with policy partners um, to provide some guidance on that as well. 
Speaking of, uh, we could not have done it without our partners. So I mentioned EdTech Team as one of our professional development partners, but we also worked with Connect Safely um, and the Family Online Institute. Uh, and just if, if you're not aware, of Connect Safely they are a nonprofit dedicated to educating users of tech, of connected technology about safety, privacy, and security. Uh, we also worked with the Student Data Privacy Consortium, which is the policy group and nonprofit that's working to address the, uh, the issues that schools face when they're protecting in, uh, their learning information. And then finally, we worked with the Family Online Institute, which is a nonprofit dedicated to making the online world safer for students and families. Okay, and I think with that, I am going to go ahead and demo this slide for you. Okay, so here we are. Um, this is the, the landing page uh, and the main page of the Chromebook App Hub. You'll see we go directly to our ideas page. And this is where uh, educators can find inspiration uh, for their upcoming lesson or curriculum planning. So um, we have a lot of different filter options, uh, including idea category, which is our largest category. Um, but also kind of your, your typical age range, subject area, and then learning goal. Learning goal, we try to use uh, as universal of language as possible to help you align with different standards that you might be using. Um, so let's go ahead and dive into one of these ideas. And all of these ideas are connected to the apps, uh, the over 75 apps that are on the App Hub. So let's check in, uh, go into the totally epic book tasting. So if we explore the idea, Okay, first thing you see, um, you actually see the educator who submitted this idea to us, and you can see her credentials. So she is a Google certified trainer and innovator and level two educator. Over on the right hand side, there's a share capability, which is really nice. Um, so if you see something that you want to share out with your fellow teachers or your network, definitely do that. Um, also, here are the tags. So I would shown you the idea categories. So if you had searched for multimedia creation or storytelling, you would have seen um, this idea pop up. Also, click uh, her about me will go directly to her official page on the Google for Education directory. So we've asked all of our educators to provide an overview, so about a paragraph, and then um, at least five tips for success. And then, as I mentioned before, here are the differentiated instruction strategies. So if we go ahead and expand, there's something here for new English language learners, a few tips, as well as special accommodations for students who might have some kind of um, specific learning disability. Uh, she also has provided different resources, so not only um, uh, videos and, and photos, but additional links. And then at the end, um, just as a reminder and to show, show exactly what were the apps uh, were that were used in this idea, uh, it's epic. And this is really designed to be a round trip experience. So when you go through an idea at the bottom, it's going to list out the app or apps that were used. Um, same thing when we go into the app page, uh, it will link back to the idea. So I'll showcase that in just a second. So here you can see you can quickly go over to the specific apps page. Um, before I dive into the, uh, a specific app, um, I'll just show you the overall apps page. So this, again, gives you a lot of different filter opportunities. Um, again, age range, subject, uh, language. This helps you see what apps support these different languages. Uh, as far as app category, primarily these are all instructionally focused. However, we do also include some administrative and back office IT tools as well. Okay, so I just happen to be a big fan of Book Creator, so um, let's go ahead and dive into that app. Okay, so right away you can see all the different tags that it, it was associated with, so annotation and note taking, media literacy, storytelling again. Uh, you can quickly visit their website, um, request a quote if you're looking to purchase their premium version. Uh, we also list some of their main badges, and this one is, is nice. We call out that they're one of our premier technology partners. Um, and again, just a quick overview. These are all some really nice resources in a carousel um, directly from Book Creator. Uh, additional links and things to help you get started. Book Creator in elementary and high school, 50 ways to use Book Creator. 
science projects, and then this app, uh, area, the additional information portion. This is what's going to be really helpful, um, most likely for your IT administrator. So first and foremost, you have the app specification. This is what it tells you what kind of an app is this. So you might, you might be familiar. Um, Chromebooks run Chrome web apps, and obviously you can visit websites on the Chromebook, um, but also Android apps. So this is showing that Foot Creator is a website. Um, as far as purchase options, you can see that it, it follows that freemium model. It does have a free version, but also different subscription options. Uh, quick stats here, and then it, we uh, highlight all of the different Google integrations. So you can see it's integrated with Classroom, with Google Drive, and you can also use it with Google Single Sign-On, which is really nice. Uh, we do list out minimum device requirements. Um, this one's saying it's minimum uh, browser requirement of version 49 to give you a sense. We're now in the 70s, so you're more than likely going to be all set uh, uh, with, with regard to what devices you're using. Um, it shows that it's compatible with a stylus, and then um, it has third-party integrations with LTI and Clever. Okay. And then probably one of my favorite things and some of the, uh, probably the portion of the app hub that I've gotten the most excited feedback over is this data policy and accessibility. So um, often, you know, uh, educators and teachers might see an app that they're really excited to use. They then have to go and ask their admin to, um, you know, whitelist that so they can use it in the domain. Then the typical flow is the admin has to go make sure that it is compliant um, based on the district and state level policies that they have to follow. Um, so we wanted to make that really easy. So now you can imagine a world where teacher sees book creator is interested in having that turned on for their um, school and send this link over to their IT administrator right here. They can see that the app is Google FERPA GDPR compliant, and it links out to all of those uh, specific pages so you can get all of the details, as well as uh, we focus some of the, the badges, so again, you can see uh, GDPR, FERPA, FERPA, CSPC, and also FCC um, uh, signed agreement. So that's really nice. Very intentionally, we also included just a, a photo of all the folks who work at the app. Um, we, we really wanted to help you connect to the people behind the technology that you're using, and you can follow them at all of the different social channels. And then, as comments, when looking at the app, we surfaced at three related ideas. So again, like I said, round trip experience, you can go, and now we're going back to an idea about personalized story, uh, personalized journaling. Okay. okay. That is really the meat and potatoes of the Chromebook App Hub. Um, we do have an about page, which is, uh, again, it goes over all the things that I shared with you today, as well as it has some frequently asked questions. On the educator page, um, we connect out to some um, digital safety resources, as well as uh, there is a link for you to uh, contact us if you are interested in submitting an idea. Um, this is open. You do not have to be a Google certified trainer or innovator to submit an idea. So if you have an idea or if you want to share this out with your learning community and fellow teachers and educators, please do. Um, We've also highlighted a lot of tips for success, and these are primarily around creating savvy digital citizens and focusing on um, digital citizenship. Now, in the administrator's uh, page, quickly, um, again, an overview and just some really nice uh, frequently asked questions that we've surfaced. So, you know, an admin might say, okay, great, this is an app. It, we approve it through our policies. How do I enable it, right? So we just show them step by step. How do they actually go about doing that? Um, you know, what about its paid license? And we explain that on uh, the App Hub, we service whether it's free or paid. And, and by and large, I, I don't quote me, but I'm almost 99.9% .9 sure that every app on the App Hub at least has a, a free version, if it's not outright free. Um, okay. And then finally, for developers, uh, so for everyone who's actually creating these apps, we have some more information for them. So again, if they are interested, I mentioned we are onboarding new uh, ideas as well as different apps on an ongoing basis. So if you go onto the App Hub and you see that an, an app that 
you love to use isn't on there yet, um, please, you know, reach out to them, uh, maybe through your IT administrator, try to get them, um, you know, connected with the App Hub, because we would love to, like, take a look at them, work with them to get them onboarded into our technology partner program. Um, and then finally, we also include development best practices, how they can optimize for Chrome OS, because of course we're talking all about Chromebooks here. A uh, few other things I just wanted to make you all aware of, um, to be accepted onto the App Hub or within our technology partner program, they have to be really clear about accessibility and data privacy or data policies, and we have standards that they have to meet for them to be a part of our program. Um, they cannot have any ads or any in-app purchases um, in your app. But, uh, and then we also ask that they uh, are very transparent uh, regarding their team and their specialties. So essentially, we are committed, we're really committed in wanting to only work with um, apps that have a specific K-12 education focus. Okay. With that, I'm going to stop sharing the screen. Oh, actually, no, I'm not going to do that. But that concludes the demo. And just a few more short links for you. Um, again, for if you know of any developers that aren't on there yet, there's a short link. If you are an educator or know some teachers or coaches who would be interested in submitting an idea, here's another short link for you. And then that leads us to the final portion. So I think we're ready for um, Q&A, if there are any last questions. So far, I think there was only one, and I think Mike jumped in and grabbed that. Um, anybody else have questions that they want to add to the chat? We can answer them live here. I'll give a couple minutes. We're really excited about this uh, program in the Chromebook App Hub coming out. We've been waiting for a long time, as, as Annie has said, um, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a great tool um, for districts, um, you know, to be able to leverage it. In, and we all know our time is very valuable. So this gives us that opportunity, that baseline to start at, hey, these apps are already vetted. They already meet these certain requirements. Annie talked about the uh, Student Data Privacy Consortium. Um, Google has a an agreement, a partnership with the Wisconsin Student Data Privacy, Privacy Consortium. Um, and as more districts um, sign on to that agreement, it's free for districts, um, they'll be able to see that that partnership exists and um, the, the apps that are um, connected to that uh, will, you can see that badge right in this, right in this program, which is fantastic. Yeah, Chad, I'll, I'll just quickly add in, uh, I know that there was a, Annie and I know that there was a concentrated effort, not only by DPI, but then also, um, you know, led by Diane, formerly of, uh, of Green Bay, and uh, to try to get this data into one place as far as acronym compliance, data policies. So we're very specific to the state of Wisconsin. Annie and I were really excited about what this could do for visibility for teachers and administrators as they look for tools to unlock learning in their school districts. So hopefully everyone that's uh, viewing or hearing this live, as well as the individuals that are going to consume this content after we're done today, um, is excited about what we have to offer in addition to all the great things with data policy and, and acronym compliance. Speaking of Diane, she had a question about the opportunity for practitioners to talk about how they're using it. Um, so this series is going to go out, go throughout the school year. We have pretty much every month um, a topic for that month, um, but I don't think we're necessarily married specifically to those topics um, right this second. So um, I think that's a fantastic idea, Diane, to get some, some people in as the school year kind of rolls on, maybe get one or two districts in to um, kind, of, kind of talk about how they're utilizing it, how they're leveraging it, um, and, and some best practices that they would. Um, suggest. Um, Janine has a question about classroom syncing with Infinite Campus. I don't see Janine's question. Oh, it was straight to me. Sorry. Okay. Well, um, you want to throw it out there? 
Yeah, so it says, will Classroom Sync with Infinite Campus? Uh, Infinite Campus is one of the SIS providers that we are speaking with. Uh, I'm not sure if they're currently as a part of the beta. If they're not, they will be soon. It is an ongoing process, as I'm sure all of you can appreciate. There's a lot of layers of technical intricacies that need to be figured out in order to make it work uh, so that we don't frustrate the teachers that are using it even as beta testers. So I'd encourage you to go to that beta page and sign up. And if it's not there, it will hopefully be there very soon. Yeah, as Mike was checking on that, I just looked it up. Um, it actually, yeah, it, it, uh, Infinite Campus is one of the two um, SIS partners that are a part of the beta like at the very beginning. So if you're using that and you get into the beta, that would be awesome. Perfect. Uh, I will use this also as a shameless plug. Uh, Diane, you had a, a great kickstart to this. Chad did, and the DPI team did send out a solicitation of uh, opportunities to participate in this ongoing learning series. As you mentioned, we're going to make this an almost monthly thing. So uh, be on the lookout in the follow-ups from the content from today for that opportunity to sign up and participate. Uh, to get a better idea of the types of topics and content that we'll be sharing together in this learning series. And uh, I'm really excited about where this is going to go and, and just one more way for us to impact teaching and learning in, in the great state of Wisconsin. And, and highlight the amazing things that are already happening. I think um, we've, we've got a really good partnership and in, in there's some really awesome things happening throughout the state. So the opportunity to be able to highlight those um, is going to be great, um, and hopefully we can make some connections um, with educators um, to find out more about how people are leveraging uh, Google tools to, to enhance the classroom ex experience. Any last questions? Again, be on the lookout. I will share out um, this recording. Um, looks like we got most of the questions answered, so um, I don't think that there's anything that we're going to miss that way. Um, and as Mike said, I will also, with that um, next, when I share this out, I will also make sure to include the opportunity for uh, presenters, again, um, for some of the topics we'll kind of share with uh, ideas that we have um, to showcase. And if, if you or someone you know um, would be great for this. Uh, make sure you fill that out for us and, and um, we'll do the best we can to get them included. All right. Well, thank you everybody for taking time out of your day. Um, we truly appreciate it and we look forward to continuing connections um, and supporting the amazing things that are happening throughout the state of Wisconsin.